a large uh, publicly listed company. And um, everyone is into real estate tokenization, right? Everyone, especially in Dubai, it's the, it's the business of uh, Dubai uh, to a large extent. And so why is it so interesting? Because, you know, why should it be something that people care about so much? What is the ideal of where we're trying to go? This is, I mean, this is very stylized. Anyone who's in the investment industry will be able to say, oh, well, this should be here or there. But roughly speaking, you know, if you put your asset classes more liquid to less liquid, if you're able to do it properly, real estate tokenization has the promise of shifting real estate from a very illiquid part of the risk spectrum to something that is quite akin to money markets or short-term bonds. Obviously, this assumes that the real estate is built and yielding. Uh, uh, and if you were to go for real estate and development, it would be somewhere in the middle. But the promise of shifting real estate from there to here and giving people the ability to invest at very small amounts, $50, $100, 1,000 dirhams, uh, is why everyone cares so much about it. And so here I want to talk about a little bit about the state of the art. Uh, where were we? Where are we? Where are we going? And so this is something that, that, that I've done. And this is something that most projects that were doing real estate tokenization in those periods um, have built or tried to build or tried to get regulated. And the idea there is that you take a real estate title could be one apartment, could be a building, could be a series of buildings, anything. You wrap it in a company, the company has shares, you tokenize those shares, and those shares are tradable in a liquid manner, assuming regulation and uh, market and liquidity and so on. This is what I see today in 2021 and going into next year. And the big advantage there is you cut out so much of the legal wrapping and the legal uh, lawyer fees, actually. I don't know if anyone here is a lawyer, but yeah. Now, the good news for lawyers is that, is that, all, is that despite, even though you're re removing this wrapping of the corporate wrapping, those digital liquid tokens are still securities. So what you're doing here in the 2021 onwards timeframe is you take a real estate title and this is where you then need very much the cooperation of, um, uh, for example, RERA or the real estate registry authorities. And that title is what you link into an NFT. And then you're able to, if you want, transfer that NFT and transfer that title as a whole building or a whole apartment or a whole city, whatever you want. But you can also shard the NFT into ERC20s, which are fungible, tradable tokens. And they're, it's purely digital. So the, the beauty of what's going on now is that you're no longer saying these are shares in a company that are available. You're saying these are digital pieces of the NFT that are securities, that are tradable in a purely digital manner. Uh, and that is something that um, a lot of people have to wrap their heads around. But from a regulatory perspective, you're already seeing uh, in places like Switzerland where, uh, and Germany, where the regulators are saying there can be such a thing as a digital native security. It does not have to be uh, a paper share that has been transposed. It can be purely digitally native. And I think this is where, um, you know, the next generation of uh, trying to shift real estate back to this area 
is going to focus. And by the way, this is also what you're seeing in, uh, in the metaverse, in the virtual world. When you go to the Centerland or the Sandbox or anywhere else that where you can purchase real estate that is uh, uh, unique uh, and as well as transferable, this is what's happening. You're getting the non-fungible token and then you can go on platforms uh, within the game and you might be able, or with outside the game, if you go to somewhere like, uh, you know, Niftex or another NFT type of uh, sharding business, and you can you can trade that. So this for me is very exciting because this, at some level, is kind of Internet 1.0. It's it's us experimenting with how do we take the old world into the new world, and. You know, and I, and, and I think that you probably have heard the analogy, but no one predicted, you know, in 97, that the biggest uh, use of internet traffic was gonna be video, right? <laughs> but uh, everyone's got Netflix. So we're still in the period where we're discovering what can be done. But for me, this is a very exciting development because I think the more you shift it to pure digital, the more you're able to do with it an embedded into applications. I write this because um, it's important to note that anyone who's doing this is basically a plumber. You know, everyone who is trying to do the legals and the regulation and the technology and the setup and, you know, how do we do the platform and how do we bring, you know, people and all of this stuff, you're plumbing. And only the plumber cares about plumbing. No one cares. The user, when you go for a shower, you want it to be easy and intuitive. You don't care how the plumbing is set up. So <laughs> this is also to say that all of this work that we're doing, which is very interesting for us, and we're trying to predict, and we're trying to build, and we're trying to uh, build our, or our, our sort of regulatory and governmental and company organisms for the future and the coming century and beyond, you know, we're doing plumbing. But ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it very easy and intuitive and safe and secure for people to, uh, to realize the benefits of what we're trying to do. Thank you. <laughs>